Welcome back, part two in a multi-part series of building out the workshop bookcase. Today we're going to break down our timber for the base panel and the top panel and cut the grooves for the sliding dovetails. If that sounds interesting to you, stick around. If you haven't seen the design video for the bookcase, I suggest you stop watching this one and go back and watch that video now. To refresh your memory, this is what we're building, the top part of our bookcase. Today, we're going to work on this bottom panel here and this top panel here. We're going to cut them to width and then we're going to lay out and cut the sliding dovetails on those panels. Since we did the design video, I found a better piece of software for doing our panel layouts to mark out the cuts. So once I release the next version of the plans, this is the version that you're going to see inside there. So this is now our cut list. You can see that everything's got a unique number, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. And we're looking for the top panel and the base panel, which is this top one here, and that's N1. Can put the size is 2310 millimeters long and it's 265 millimeters wide and i need two of those obviously one for the top and one for the bottom if i look at my breakdown on my panels you can see here that n1 is on that piece there two of them 2310 by 265 and you can also see that n1 is there and n1 is there so these are the two panels that i am looking for the reason I changed the software is this is much better at giving me linear cuts. So this is my 2400 millimeter pine board by 600 millimeters wide. And you can see I can now just rip straight down this middle at a 265 distance, repeat at 265 distance, and then I can take off these end parts here, and that is clearly waste. This piece here that's left over are parts N8 and N17, I don't need those for the first part of the joinery, so I'll just put that on one side and we'll trim it down later. So the first job is to rip this panel at 265, and for that we're going to use the parallel guides. Now you've seen me use the parallel guides before, and we did a video series on the parallel guides. So if you're not sure how to use the parallel guides, go ahead and check that out now, and that will give you all that you need to know. The other thing I've done is I've connected my rails together to give me an overall rail of 2,800, which is more than enough for the cut that we need to make. And I've just simply used the Festool rail clamps, one on the front and one on the back, to actually secure those together. We're now set up for the cut, but before we do that, I just want to do a final check. I'm using the metal rule, I'm going to slide it up to my cut line, and I'm looking for 265, and that is bang on 265, so I'm happy that we've set things up correctly. We can now come in and we can make our cut. With that one done, we can now reposition the rail and we can cut our second one. Okay, so that now means I've got my two panels tick, and it also means I've got a spare piece for N8 and N17, which are my draw styles and my door styles. So we put this on one side for later use. So I've moved my Festool guide rail down to the second MFT, and I've just ensured that the fence is square to the rail. And I've just used my MFS, which is the most accurate square I now have in the shop, to make sure that all that is square. And that looks good to me. I now want to cut these pieces down to 2,310 millimetres. First thing I want to do is just to cut off this factory edge here. This was the original front of the board, so this was our original reference surface. And this is where we made that cut. So I'm keeping the boards in the same orientation. So we know that all these are parallel because of the way we set the parallel guides up. This is one of our cut edges, so I want to use that as a reference. I just want to make sure that I'm always using that as a reference guide and that I always keep these two pieces together because that was the cut that we made. I can now level up the ends here and just slide these back to any arbitrary position 
And as long as I can get 2310, which is there, then that's going to be okay. So with that done, and with this edge, this end flushed up, everything square to the to the edge, I can now drop my rail into place, adjust it for height, and when I make this cut, I should have a square edge between this edge here and this one, giving me a second reference face. I will then turn the boards, ensuring I keep this reference face against this edge, and then I'll cut it to final length. Now, all things being equal, we should have boards that are square, that are all the same length, and are cut down to width. And we have. So with the panels cut to width and the panels cut to length, the next things I want to do is to put the joinery on here. If we refer back to the diagram, there's two types of joinery we need to put onto these panels. First is these sliding dovetail female sockets, and they are on both panels. You remember from the design video, there's a 15 millimeter rebate that goes all the way around the back, and that's to take the tongue and groove cladding that we've used elsewhere in the workshop. We're gonna cut the rebate at the back first of all, and then we'll cut the sliding dovetails. The reason we're going to do it on that order is once we've cut these dovetails in, it makes a very fragile point just at the top of the dovetail joint there. And if we now come across that with a router, it will chip out that edge of the joint and that will show on the final joinery. So we'll do the back first of all on both panels and then we'll come in and we'll do the dovetail joint. I've just put some marks on these panels so I'll start to know what the front and the back is. I've put a reference mark here and there's a similar reference mark further down the board. That's going to be the back and with that arrow, that's also showing me that's the point I'm always referencing against my fences. In the centre here, I've just put a V and that V is saying this is a direction and these two boards clamp together in this way. And the inside joints here, that will be the front of my board. And the reason for that is, as I'm routing across this, this will prevent any tear out or any chip out on that edge and will give me a very, very clean joint. And that's important because that will be seen on the finished joinery. So this here must be the back of this panel. So job one is I want to route the 15 millimeter channel there and route the 15 millimeter channel there. This is a router bit we're going to use to put the rebate onto the panels. This is a 19 millimeter straight cut bit. So half of this, the center point must be nine and a half millimeters. And we'll use that knowledge to line up the router. We're going to use the fence that came with the OF1400. And if you've not seen that, check out the video for a bit more details. And we'll line this up so the center marks on the router base are at the edge of the board. We'll then use this adjustment dial on the fence Every revolution is a millimeter. So we can move this fence back a millimeter at a time in a very, very controlled way. So we know that our bit is nine and a half millimeter to the center point. So when we center that, we know that will cut a nine and a half millimeter groove. So 15 millimeters, the width of the rebate, minus nine and a half, the half size of the bit, equals five and a half. So we use the dial to move this in five and a half millimeters, and that will give us an accurate 15 millimeter rebate. In terms of the depth, as long as it's not going all the way through, doesn't really matter. So we'll do a depth of cut about 10 millimeters, I think. Feels nice on an 18 millimeter board. So the first thing I want to do is I want to line this center point here on the router to the edge of my material. Slide the router into position, making sure my fence is firm against the edge. And when I'm close, I can just lock this down and that just makes sure everything is nice and square. I can now use the adjustment knob to just fine tune so I now know that that's my centre point. And if I plunge down here, that means half of my router bit will be cutting into the material 9.5 millimetres. From there, I want to move the router into the panel by 5.5 millimetres. So I can now zero this gauge down here 
and now I can rotate this five and a half times and that will move the, the, the router in. One, two, three, four, five and a half. And then I can lock that into position. Now that's moved the router in from the edge and that distance there will be five and a half millimeters. We can check that if we want to, just to prove it to ourselves. And on here, I've now got 5.9. So we're just gonna dial it back a little bit and that's coming in at 5.57 and that's good enough. So as I plunge that bit down, the overall depth of cut is going to be round about 15 <coughs> millimeters and that's what we are looking for. Now that's the easiest way that I found to set that up. Now this distance isn't actually that critical. The reason I'm going for 15 is the tongue and groove is about 14.7 millimeters thick nominally and I, I always like the idea of a small shadow line around the back. Now it's never going to be seen and it's a personal thing. And to be honest with you, you don't even need to do this. You can just nail these to the back. It's against the wall, it's never seen. It's just one of those things that I, that I like to do to make sure it's all flush and it's personal satisfaction sort of thing. So you can see the effect that we're going for here. This is scrap wood, obviously, but it is the same material going to use. So that nailed into place, you can see there's this very small shadow line here. And I think that just finishes it off nicely so anybody ever does see the back we're in good shape so we've now got the back channels routed into our material i've reorientated the boards so once again my reference edge is against the fence my outside edges the part facing the front of the bookcase are once again lined up edge to edge and my other area is here so we can now route across and that will protect these inside faces from chipping out so I now want to revisit and look at these dovetails. In my collection of router bits, I have a dovetail bit. In fact, to be honest, I bought this for the job. And because I'm using a lot of 18 millimeter panel in my joinery, it made sense to buy a dovetail cutter that works for 18 millimeter panels. So this gives me a nominal cut of 17 millimeters. And it's also an eight degree angle. So it's relatively steep. So with a 17-ish millimetre router bit, I only need to make one pass across my boards to give me the cut. You could use a smaller router, but what you then have to do is to make double passes. So if that was the profile that you wanted to cut, and you didn't have a router that was deep enough, you'd make your first pass there, and then you'd have to move your router over a bit and make a second pass there now that's possible but what you'll find is once your router bit is over on this side of the material here there's nothing supporting it on this side and it will tend to wander out so any knots or anything in this wall will knock your router bit out a little bit and you won't notice that until you try and slide the male components of your dovetail into place so if you can it's much better to get it in a single pass so we now need to work out where we need to cut our dovetails. We know that the internal dimensions of this end part are 473 millimeters. We know that the material is 18 millimeters. And we know that we want the dovetail in the center of that panel, which is nine millimeters. So if we add nine and 473 and 18, we get 500 millimeters. So we know that our cut is 500 millimeters from the end of the panels. And that's equally true for this end here. So we know that also is going to be 500 millimeters. Now the middle one is somewhat easier. We know it's going to be in the center of the panel. And we know that these are 2,310 long. So therefore, this would need to be one, 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 five. Is that correct? Two, three, one, oh, divided by two, one, one, five, five. That sounds better. One, one, five, five millimeters. This next thing I want to think about is how deep do I want to make these? 
Well, I want all these joints to look the same. So the joints that are holding the top panel in and the bottom panel and the joints that are holding the fixed shelves into place. So I want all of these to be at the same depth. We know that the panel is 18 millimeters. I want a center portion of material, a cut and a cut. So I'm going to divide 18 by three. So my depth of cut is going to be round about six millimeters. And that's going to give me optimal strength of the joint, but still leave some strength on that center panel. Once these are cut in the center panels, we're going to need to be careful because there's quite a lot of height on these, 1154 millimeters. So we need to make sure that we don't allow the weight to bend on that joint, but we'll look at that when we come to work on those panels. We're going to use a Festool track and we're going to use the track guides to guide the router into the cut. And that way, this cut should be perfectly parallel and square across the two boards. And I'm going to cut both boards at the same time so it lines up perfectly. Now, what is super, 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 super critical here is that your track is square to your boards. It should be because we squared all the fences up. But before you make this cut, check yourself, check yourself again, and then just for a bit of fun, check yourself again. The reason this is important, if we have any errors now in this cut, the dovetail is going to come up at an angle across the boards. And although it will line up and we could slide a dovetail right across this piece of material, once we separate those and put one at the top and one at the bottom, the offset will show like this. And therefore your panels are going to come in twisted and at an angle. In fact, they won't go in at all. The wood will split. And you're only going to find that out when you come to assemble the bookcase. So make sure that this is very square, very parallel, and you are really confident with the cut. Come in and mark 500 millimeters. And I'm lining that mark up with the cutting edge of my strip and making sure everything is nice and square. I'm checking everything's tight, everything's lined up. I'm checking that my ends are flush, just off camera there, to make sure we're all perfectly aligned. And then I'm going to use my parallel guide to make a mark right across my boards. And that's where we're going to cut our dovetail. I'm using my clamps on these two rails. It gives me a much better guide across the rail. I'm resting the router on the end of my rail and I've put the foot on here to support the router on the material and I'm going to move the boards back until the lines line up with the center point of my router. I'm now going to do one final check. I'm going to check that the line here on the back side lines up. I'm going to slide across as if I made the cut and I'm going to check that I'm still lining up my center line and that's a final check to say am I really confident and I'm super square on this and I am, so we can go ahead and we can make that cut. Think this through a little bit more. We know that the cut on the far end is also gonna be 500 millimeters. So I'm gonna put a stop on that end now, and then when we turn the boards over to do the cut at the other end, and we don't need to lay out the router again and do that marking that we've just done. Final thing I want to do is to put some clamping pressure on the two panels, pushing them into the fence. nice dovetail joint that's going to hold this cabinet together beautifully. So now we spin it round and we do the other end. And the final job is we find the centre of the board which we said was 1155. 1155 is there. Once you've got your line, you actually want to check that your dovetails here are lined up. They are, and they are, and then that this is square and firm, 
and then we can make our marking line for that cut. Always being overly paranoid about square. That's promising to be good. Yep, yep, I get I think I'm happy with this. Everything's clamped, everything seems to be square. I've got a consistent cut across the board. Now, here's the test. If we now fold our boards over, and, oh, look at the front, you can see how clean that joint is that we're talking about. And that's because we have the two faces together, and that's give us a really clean dovetail joint. That one lines up. That one's lining up. and that one's lining up. The test is whether the ones at the back line up. And that's not bad. So you can see how that's, that's lining up there. That's exactly what we're looking for. And that one's good and this one is pretty good as well. If we had taken the time to make sure that those cuts were square to the board, we would now see an offset in this back joint. This one for example could be over this way and this one could be over this way. And if that's the case, when you put your boards into this, it will be twisted. But what we've ended up with is a perfect match, I mean a really perfect match in that joint. And that's going to make a really square, really tight joint and really give this framework some strength. And I'm really, really pleased about that. Really pleased about that. And that's it for today. I'm really pleased with that. That's come out incredibly well. Really tight joints, perfectly aligned. That's going to go together really nicely. I'll go ahead and cut out the end panels and the three internal panels, just using the layout guide and the cut list, exactly the same way that we did these. And then we'll come back together and we'll do the domino joints for the end panels and we'll cut the male parts of the sliding dovetail. Thanks for watching. See you next time.